As someone who didn't really play a whole lot of Invasion back in the Reach days, when this came around to Flight 3, tell you guys, I was super excited. So in this video, I want to give you my impressions, and really my first impressions ever, of playing Invasion in Halo Reach. But we're doing it in some awesome 1080p 60fps gameplay for you guys here. So if you guys like these kind of gameplay commentary videos, Please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on the video and the gameplay as well. If you guys are into more of these commentary style videos rather than just the straight news stuff that I've been kind of posting up for you guys. And if you're new to the channel, we'll stay up to date with anything Halo related. That's Halo Reach, Halo Infinite, Halo MCC, Halo 5, everything in between. Make sure to tap subscribe, guys. Keep up to date with everything going on in Halo. So let's get right into the video here. So, like I said, guys. Back in the days of Halo Reach, I really didn't play very many game modes. I was really just a Halo Reach 5v5 social slayer kid. And so I didn't really experience the full ex uh, offering that Halo Reach had to give to us. And so coming back nearly 10 years later, 9 years later really more to be exact, how does this game mode play? Well, how does Invasion play? Well, Invasion to me is freaking awesome. I played the beta were in flight uh, for this day and it was one map for invasion and i literally played it for six hours straight that's not an exaggeration so if you guys don't know how invasion works or if you're new to the mode basically it's attack and a defend mode one team plays the spartans the other team play as uh, the elites who will come at you and the thing is that the elites are actually to true scale they're not like how it is in halo 3 or in halo 2 where they like make them the same size with just different models they actually are bigger and they jump higher and move faster than your spartan so there actually is this physical differences between these two characters uh, that you play as and so then it really kind of helps give some really interesting dynamics to uh, how the gameplay um, well opens up uh, each you know character has their own loadouts with different Spartan abilities and things like that and so the first wave guys there's three different ways to the whole thing the first wave is a defending the a, a Bravo and an alpha uh, checkpoints right here as you can see at the left and right of me this is Bra uh, Bravo's on the left side of the defending team alpha's on the right side right here you can hear him brushing out the alpha side getting sworn by elites and uh, eventually got killed and so basically the uh, attacking team, which is always going to be the elites, are always going to be the attacking team, if I remember correctly. Uh, they have to capture one of these bases, and when, once one of these bases uh, gets captured, it moves on to the second objective, which we'll t show talk to you about guys in a little bit here. So now, so far on this map breakpoint, most of the times it was the Bravo point, as you can see on the screen. It's left on the screen right here. That point was pretty much the one that a lot of people end up taking because it's the shortest distance from cover to that point. As you can see, that's the highest elevation right there on the left side. A lot of people like to camp it out right there. Compared to the Alpha side, which has this bit of an open field, and the only time you're ever really going to grab it is whenever people are so focused on defending Bravo is when you can sneak in and grab an A, but majority of the time, Bravo, people are capturing it. So if you're playing Invasion, you on Breakpoint, you want to defend this point right here. And a very important thing is to be able to grab a DMR if you are the defending team. And also if you're the, uh, the attacking team, the elites, to grab that needle rifle in the beginning of the map. If you guys don't know where they spawn, on this map, they brought the uh, DMRs spawn right up where I'm jumping, that little walkway up here. There's two that spawn in each corner of this building, so you definitely want to jump up there and grab them, pick up guys at a distance to kind of hold them back. If you're the elite side of things, there is one needle rifle that spawns kind of the middle ridge or where everyone spawns at. You absolutely need to pick that up, and their job right there with that is to just uh, lay down some damage, hold them off. As you see, what we did right here, we did a pretty good job of holding them off. So now the next round, so we got the first win there. I believe it's the first team to three wins wins the uh, the match. So now we're going to go to the attacking team so you can see what it's like. So I spawn in with the needle rifle and active camo. The other one, I believe, is the plasma repeater and the plasma pistol. And you have uh, the roll ability. But as you see right here, I'm going to go with camo and try to sneak up a little bit, try to disrupt the uh, enemy team here. Now, if you guys do not know, a uh, big thing is with Invasion, they use vanilla reach settings. So uh, the bloom is at 100%. Uh, if you can see in camo right there, actually a big thing, if I remember correctly, before title update, is that it does interfere with your teammates' radars, if I remember correctly. Oh, no, it doesn't. I just saw the guy go camo and that didn't happen. So fake news, guys. Um, but 
Uh, so keep that in mind. I will make a video about how the differences between TU and uh, vanilla settings are because they're very important settings to know the difference between. So you can have some intricate little details to help you give you uh, an advantage in certain gunfights here. This point right here, I was going to really try to kind of push forward and capture this Bravo objective. As you can see, I'm going camo. So, there, so the enemy's radar is completely scattered. And I'm going to just crouch walk my way to victory here to try to get as much time off. Um, an interesting uh, mechanic here, as you can see on the little icon right there, it says 8 right there. That it tells you how many seconds a, a player needs to stand on that objective to capture it. Now if I got it all the way down to 1 second, it actually would happen if it was going to get reset, it would get reset up to 7. So that's as high as its reset can be. So if a team really kind of coordinates and pushes to that objective, you really can do a good job of holding them off. And it's, for some reason it's showing, it's waiting for respawn teammate in the enemy territory. I'm guessing over here I was trying to spawn on a teammate. You know, so I captured this from theater mode. So I'm guessing I'm trying to spawn on a teammate. I was waiting for him to spawn in there. We go. See, now I spawned right behind him. Went camo. I'm like, oh, look. Easy kill. <laughs> oh my god, get wrecked, kid. So uh, the great thing is, see, now we guys just captured the Bravo point and we were able to move forward onto the next, next objective. The next objective in invasion here is the second phase is you have, it's uh, a bomb mode, basically. So there's a bomb that spawns just to the left inside that building. I call it the space grape because, well, it's space-like and it's shaped like a, and it's purple like a grape. <laughs> and basically, we have to take this bomb into the enemy base, have that blow up, which causes then the third phase, which I will show you guys uh, get into uh, soon, right after this. Which, by the way, yes, I know I will stand in there. This game, but was I was streaming while this was happening, so I was probably just casually playing. If you guys do want to know my Twitch, it's in the link to, in the description down below. twitchtv Coolx. Um, and so this section of the map I felt was, uh, again, like most of the times I really felt like a lot of the attacking team was able to get past the first objective, get past the second objective. The third objective is the really tough one that really involves coordination, which we'll get into later in this video here, guys. So you can see right here, there's a A and a B point, bomb point, where you need to go plant the bomb. Very similar how uh, assault works in Halo, where you have to push the bomb into an objective, hold the bomb there, and then it blows up basically. Now that's exactly what you have to do in here. You can see I'm holding the space grape right here, trying to, you know, progress it forward. But it's just it's a little high in here, as you can tell. And so you see right here using that roll ability with the needle rifle to kind of help back it up a little bit. Even got a kill with the grenade there, which is pretty nice. And so uh, I'm still learning some intricacies when it comes to like exact good tactics and things like that. I found a lot of times it's just more important to kind of slay out and fight off spawns, uh, especially in this mode. If you guys can get at least like you know, as soon as you have an opening, you need to take advantage of it. And I think in this situation, I was kind of holding back because yeah, they have a warthog right here, and uh, my team wasn't really exactly doing much. But I was just trying to like, just push the ball forward. Like making a move like this is actually huge. Be able to push the ball that far forward. And look at that noob combo, man. Not nearly as good as it used to be back in the days. And you can see right there, I did a very bad play. I went to go for the melee, and the thing is with uh, vanilla settings, that there is no bleed through with the shields. Basically meaning if you, you have to wait till the guy's shield pops before you can get like a melee kill And so I was playing it like I've always played Halo and so that kind of threw me off right there And we're so close. I believe it is the Bravo or Alpha point whatever you want to call it the right side objective I'm just gonna call it uh, that we're really trying to set this up up uh, spoiler alert. We're doing good at um, but because you can see it's just right there so close and the enemy team cannot uh, reset it but I do believe it does have a timer for if it's uh, inactive for too long it just spawns back at the base and if that happens it really really <laughs> uh, holds your progression of trying to uh, push this uh, objective forward and pretty much if it happens you're really just screwed because you just run out of time really because yeah, I believe you only get like three or something like that per round. Watch this right here. I knew my teammate was going for the, the me double melee. I was like, well, to make sure he does get that kill, because he's going for the trade. I mean, that's pretty real. I'm just going to stick in the back and uh, make sure I get that and then plant the bomb there like a champ. And you can see it blows up in 12 seconds. If the, the enemy team does have time to defuse it, which I had plenty of times when I was playing Invasion to actually defuse the bomb. Uh, it is very possible, but you can see we are able to blow this up. Now we're up to the third phase of Invasion. Invasion on the third phase basically you can see that there's like a little flag icon There's a core that I need to pick up and take over to the Phantom that's about to the other side of the map You might be able to see it on some spawn points or something like that 
the rough this is the hardest part where a lot of attacking teams get caught up on because basically you need to go into their spawn essentially grab the objective can you can you can flag juggle it if you want and move down this open long hallway to get to that point now it is very possible because there are a lot of vehicles you get a banshee uh, a ghost and a wraith back at the spawn if your team utilizes it properly you can get it actually pretty well uh, the enemy team and then the defending team here you do get i think a spartan laser a rocket which does auto lock on and a sniper rifle and then i believe some warthogs and i think also a ghost you get on that side as well uh, so a lot of vehicles, a lot of power weapons kind of getting utilized here. I just love this attack and defend mode. It's the first time I've ever really played Invasion, and I find it just to be just an absolute blast, guys. Like, it's so much fun to be able to play this uh, just because, like, uh, first of all, I love attack and defend modes. I was a huge fan of Rush back in the, the Battlefield days, especially Bad Company 2. You get that kind of feel, but with just a little bit extra. And the thing, too, is that with it being Spartans versus Elites, it creates kind of more of a cinematic experience with like all these explosions going off of like planting bombs and getting these objectives, things like that, that you really kind of get the sense of like the Elites kind of jumping in and really pushing forward to get the objectives. And you can see we actually just got the win right there, surprisingly. <laughs> I thought we had a little more archer time, but yeah, uh, that's the end of the game there, guys. If you guys enjoyed Invasion and want to see more like it, make sure to tap that like button. Let's know you want to see some more content like this leave a comment down below what your thoughts are invasion i do read all comments and try to reply to most of them as well for my final thoughts on invasion guys i would just say that this mode is absolutely amazing i'm actually now i've become sad that i have not played it until just now and i definitely want to play more of it when reach comes out to the mcc so thank you so much for watching guys i greatly appreciate it. check out the videos on the screen right now if you missed any content for me and i'll catch you all in the next video peace out